Alright guys, welcome back to Relegation Battle. Um, got Champions League football coming up this week, so we'll go into that a bit later on. But first, Ty Chelsea playing in a couple hours. You beat Barnsley in midweek. It wasn't as convincing as you probably would have expected. How do you feel going to the Newcastle no. game? Um nervous because this this always happens. Everyone drops points and then we we have it literally right there. And then we this is this the stage is set for Chelsea to lose one nil and for that like Andy Carroll to score a last minute header or something. It happened last season. Um and we played Newcastle at St. James's Park. Obviously we're at home this time, but I don't think home advantage really matters when there's no fans. But um yeah, so it happened last season. Isaac Hayden scored in the last minute and you know, obviously we can win, but it's just whether whether we decide to turn up because most of the time when we when there's a chance there to go above um, loads of other teams, we don't, don't take it. So hopefully today's different, but yeah, we should really win. But you know, who knows? It's Chelsea; anything can happen. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of obviously Tuchel's coming. There's got to be a lot of changes, a lot of players, and new systems. Yeah. It seems like Ziek is struggling a bit there and then you've got Hudson and Dory's doing really well. Pulisic still hasn't really hit form like he was last season as well. What front three would you go for tonight? Probably I think I think Havertz is still injured, so probably um <clears throat> Mason Mount, Hudson Adoy, and and then it's between Werner and Abraham. Because in the last two games he's played, Werner's at better, he just hasn't got the goal which is unfortunate. But I think if he plays today, he'll probably get that goal and then get his confidence back, hopefully, because we need it. But, so yeah, I'd probably go Mount, Hudson, Odoi, and then between Abraham and Werner, I'm not really fussed, so. Yeah, it's fair enough. I mean, yeah, if you win, I'm looking at the table now, you go into fourth, but obviously West yeah. Ham are playing right now as well. They're kind of drawing against Sheffield United, but it's still earlier in the game. Right now, they are technically above you, but because they're on the same points as before the game, yeah. but... Definitely want to look out for that. Jack, the week started off okay for you guys. You got uh, into the next round of the FA Cup, into the quarterfinals after extra time. McSource getting another goal. But then against West Brom, it was the same old problems almost. Dropping points against the lowest sides. A bit of controversy in the game, of course, with the opening goal for West Brom. But what did you think of the game in general? And just before, because you mentioned the, well, I'll quickly speak about just a, a brief about the West Ham game. That was so boring. Um, West Ham, when I don't have Antonio, they just sit so deep. Um, oh, it was so boring. They literally just sat in two banks of four and just defended. Yeah, I mean, glad we won, trying to get, try and actually win a cup for once, but it was just so boring. And this West Brom game, um, we didn't decide to play until the 40th minute. You know, there was no intensity in the first half. No passes forward, always side um, sideways or backwards. I don't know why. Um, second half starts. We actually started the second half quite well. There was, you can tell that um, Oli got into them at half time. A lot of passes forward, quicker on the ball, quicker intensity. But we just couldn't score a goal. Mason Greenwood had a like that, there was this like passage of two shots that Greenwood have had, and then I think maybe it might be McTominay as well, but they like cleared it off the line. And I don't know, we never re- we never really looked like scoring a winner really, and again, not great against um, a poor side. Yeah, and I know you spoke about it, but what did you make of the opening goal for West Brom, the challenge on Lindelof? Do you think it was fair? Do you think there should have been a foul? This is that's like this is a, like probably every United fan probably main criticism of Lindelof is he's not strong enough against those battles, always losing headers. I go back to the was it this season I want to say maybe the start of the it might be like the start of this season or last season there was um a game we played Crystal Palace. Oh yeah, it was last season. It was last season. Played Crystal Palace, and it was just a long ball up to Ayu, and he misses it, and they're through and gone. They score, and it happens all the time. We always say that's his weakness, and then he's got to be stronger. But it's a foul. The hand straight in your face. 
Tyrese is there <laughs> saying it's clearly not a foul, but he's got to be stronger. I accept that. But what do you want him to do when there's a hand straight in his face like that? Anywhere else in the, on the pitch, that's a foul. How do you disagree? Mm. I can see where he's coming from, but obviously... I don't think it's a foul. My, but then then again, if that was against Chelsea, I'd probably be saying it's a foul in it. But, you know, um, I'm pretty sure VAR looked at it and they didn't see that it was a foul. But at the same time, he just... I understand what you're saying about what can he really do. But the fact that you lot are letting crosses into your box that early in the game in the first place is a bit... Is that not a bit worrying? I mean, not really. They, were, they had the... They started... They started off, so they were... They went quickly up, like the first minute. You could, they wanted to get like an early goal and just sit back and defend. Mm -hmm. And they got that. I mean, we could have 100%. We we dropped too early, so we were so deep, so De Gea couldn't come out. But when you're, he's a he's a bigger man, yeah, the guy. So, but he's wrestling Lindelof. Mm -hmm. You know, if if we're in if we're in the middle of the pitch, and two players are. One player's got the ball, one player, and and he's shielding against the other. To to shield him off, if you put a hand in his face, that would be a foul. Mm. And that's what I can't I can't remember his name, um, but that's what he did to Lindelof to get um, past him, put his put his whole palm on his face, and ended up. I mean, that's the thing with. Actually, I don't I don't want to get to VAR, but obviously that's for clear and obvious, which clearly that apparently wasn't clear and obvious, so. But yeah, it is, it is annoying that. Oh, just yeah, it's, it's 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 just one of them. It's like 50 50 and it. it could be a foul, but then it can also, then some people can see it as not a foul. It's just it's just one of them things. Yeah, yeah. I mean, speak of West Brom in the table. So Sheffield United, West Brom, Fulham in the bottom three. So Fulham are 18th and Newcastle 17th, and there's a seven point gap there. Do you think the three teams in the relegation zone right now are gone? Or do you think maybe Fulham have a small chance? I mean, West Brom are 12 points off safety and they've played a game extra on Newcastle as well. Yeah, I think West Ham are gone. West Brom. Um, Brom. I think West... Oh, yes, yeah, sorry. That's a West, <laughs> I think West Brom and Sheffield United are gone. But with Fulham beating Everton last night, I think it was. Yeah, last yeah. night. You know they they're going to lose some games, but they're going to pick up some important wins, and I I think they they could they're the only team I think out of the bottom three that could stay up, but I think West Brom and Sheffield United are going to go down. Yeah, I agree. Uh, if you look at look at the way Fulham played yesterday, I think like uh, in some games they just look too good to go down. They've just been really unlucky in games. Like when they played when they played versus um, Chelsea. Um, they were probably unlucky to lose, but I think it's cause, just because they got that red card, they had to sit back. Because before that, then they were dominating us. And also, if if Loftus Cheek can start um, <laughs> getting more goals and assists, you know, because like I'm watching him and he, he's doing well, but it's just for some reason he's just missing end product. So if for some, if he can, you know, everyone knows I like to talk about him back in 2018, 19 before he got that injury. If he can start scoring goals like he was back then, then he can probably keep them up. And I think Lookman as well. Lookman's very important to them staying up. And and the person that played up front yesterday, I think his name was Magar or something. Yeah, Josh Magar. If he can, yeah. Yeah, if he can keep if he can keep it up, then I think they'll definitely stay up. Yeah, I mean uh, you mentioned there that they'd be unlucky in games, the Chelsea game, the Spurs game, I think the United game as well, they weren't too bad when they were at home. So Yeah. They definitely have the quality, I think, to challenge Newcastle, but other two, yeah, I mean, I'd love for Big Sam to just pull it off again somehow, but I don't think it's going to happen this time around. Um, we'll go to Arsenal next. Uh, so we obviously didn't play any FA Cup, so we had a bit of a break there. Played against Leeds yesterday, Ty's favourite team, of course. And it was, <laughs> I think it's a good win for us. A bad man getting his first Premier League hat trick, I think that was important for him. And it couldn't really come at a better time because we've got a tough run of games. Europa League's starting to come in and obviously that's a lot more, uh, it comes around more often than Champions League because we have the round of 32 as well, so, which is just great. And, you know, we have to travel to, I think, traveling to Italy this week and then Greece next week for the home and away fixtures, which is just makes things a lot more complicated as well for us. 
but his ways at that point. But yeah, as a team, I think it was good because Arteta could rest Pepe for Europa League because I don't think he dropped him just for the sake of being dropped. I think he is just resting. Same with Rob Holding as well. I think uh, yeah, he literally said in his pre-match that there's just too many minutes for Holding at the moment, so resting him there. I think Odegaard played well. Probably should have got an assist, but I think that offers a bit more creativity as well. Getting Smithrow out wide, because he can play there as well now. And Saka, Odegaard and Smithrow, those three, you know, the three creators really. So if we can get them passing to Laka, passing to Bamiang. I think that should help the problems that we had earlier in the season rather than just cross and hope for someone to somehow get in the end of it. Mm. I think Sabayos did really well yesterday. I thought I think him and Odegaard were linking up really well, which I didn't say surprisingly, but you know, he'd be out for a bit. I didn't think he'd start off that quickly. Great assist from him as well. I mean, Bellerin scored the goal, but I feel like the second goal, you have to put some of it down to him, just not tracking his man quick enough or early enough, should I say. And, you know, I mean, we, he man, Arteta managed the game one, the end, bring on Elneny and Rob Holding just to see out the game. But, yeah. yeah, I mean, I was a bit annoying the first half after 1-0 because obviously Saka, the penalty was, what's the word, it was overturned, which I don't think it was right. It didn't make sense to me because it's not clear and obvious. You could say the contact was soft, but then you go back to Dow Luisa Wolves. If that isn't soft, then I don't know what is. So... It's a bit of a 50-50, but luckily, you know, we got the goals in the end anyway. But yeah, like I said, it was just perfect timing for us as well. I think Tierney could be back for the Benfica game. I think he's more likely to come back than Party is. So that's obviously a boost, but, you know, Man City next week, I'm not looking forward to that. And we're going to them right now. So City have won their last 16 games in all competitions. And I think the main man in that spell has been Ilkay Gundogan, scoring again against Spurs, scoring twice against Spurs. Nine goals, I believe, in 2021 for him, more than any other player in Europe's top five leagues. Jack, what do you think has changed the game for him? I think when you watch him, you can see him doing more runs into the box. I think when he has played before, he's played in a Rodri or a Fernandinho-style role. So obviously, like not a defensive midfielder, but like a just a dictate play. Yeah. But now, obviously, De Bruyne's injured. He's moved like further forward, and then Rodri and Fernandinho's come in. So I think those runs into the box that be able to push further further forward has just enabled him to score many goals in 2021. Yeah, tight. Like I said, 16 um, 16 wins in a row. Not even just like, being eight wins in a row. It's a crazy run. Three no one against Spurs into the quarters of the FA Cup as well. I know he's still really in the Carabao Cup final. Do you think they'll do the domestic treble again? Um, they'll, they'll win the league. Um, I hope they absolutely slap Tottenham up. Like, I just, <laughs> oh, I can't wait to watch that game. Um, and then the FA Cup, obviously, I'm hoping that we can win it because, you know, obviously we got to the final last season, but Arsenal obviously won that one. Um but um yeah, so they 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 probably will win it, but obviously I don't they could they could even win the Champions League, you know. If they keep playing like yeah. this, they could like because if you actually you look at Bayern Munich, I think it's just I think it's definitely gonna be one of them two in my opinion. But Bayern Munich defensively this season, they haven't actually been that good. They've just they're just really good going forward and they've got the best striker in the world. So you know, and at the Do moment, you think Man City... City could win the Champions League without a recognised striker. I know it's working very well in the Prem, and yeah. do you think that would work against Bayern, PSG? Aguero is back on the bench, Barcelona. I think, so it could be back soon. Oh, okay. I didn't, but, yeah. I didn't know. But even then, then would he stay yeah. fit? Exactly. Like he get injured again soon. Exactly. But then, even if you look at players, like, the thing is, they haven't even got De Bruyne at the moment. Like, that's what we need to think about as well. Like, it's got. Early Phil Foden just doing an absolute madness, proving why he's the best youngster in the league. Um, it's, it's absolutely crazy. Um, but yeah, I think they could definitely, they probably will do the domestic treble. And if they do get the Champions League, then probably looking at the greatest Prem team of all time. 
potentially, yeah. I mean, obviously, on the other side of that game, Spurs, not a good week for them. Knocked out the FA Cup against Everton, 5-4. is a thrilling game, going to extra time. And then, obviously, get smacked out by City. I think... Same old they, time in a minute. Yeah, they were giving a bit of hope last week when they beat West Brom 2-0, but... And obviously, they have, they, have, they have a bad record against City, especially Mourinho against Pep, but they're just outclassed that, on that day, I think. So, they've dropped down to ninth as well, which isn't good for them, but... And they've got Europa League starting this week as well against Wolfsburg yeah. at AC. So... It's going to be a tough, not tough run of games, but uh, a lot of games in a small amount of time for them as well. Won't be too easy. Um, other than that, I'm, like you mentioned earlier, youngsters in the league, Pedro Neto scored a great goal for Wolves as they came back from 1-0 down to beat Southampton. So they're starting to maybe t- to kick on a bit as well. Um, so yeah, we mentioned it, Champions League back this week. Let me just get the fixtures up quickly. Uh, we need to talk about Liverpool. Yeah, we do. So, tomorrow, big game, Barca versus PSG. Barca got a good win on the weekend, 5-1, I believe. Messi scoring two. I think Trent Cow scored two as well. PSG missing Neymar as well, and I think that might be for both legs. Do you think uh, that's a good chance for Barca to knock out a strong contender for the Champions League? Maybe the best chance they get. You know, Neymar's a massive player for um, PSG. I know they've got Mbappe, but with Neymar out, that's going to be a big blow for them. They're going to be slow, um, solely um, relying on Mbappe, whether he can do it. Probably can, but, you know, it takes... Do you see the... But you say, but you say that and then Barcelona have Messi as well, so it's mm. going to be interesting to see, to see if uh, Barcelona can do it. Yeah, tight. We talked about there, the Liverpool is also the other game on that day, Liverpool-Leipzig. Leipzig have won their last four in all competitions. Liverpool, we know they're struggling a bit. We thought we'd turn around when they beat Spurs and West Ham back-to-back, but they've lost their last three in a row now. The defensive issues are there. Alisson with another howler against Leicester as well, which I forgot to mention earlier. Of course, that was a huge win for Leicester and Chelsea and even United, really. But Champions League, Liverpool always have this almost, not love affair, I'd say, but there is something around them and Champions League. Obviously, they knocked out quite early last season as well. But do you think Leipzig could cause an upset here? Is it an upset? I mean, look at the way look at the way Liverpool are playing. I mean, I've been saying it, yeah. I've said it for a while. You are not, they are not the greatest Premier League team of all time. You cannot be, I don't care about the injuries, right? You cannot be considered one of the greatest Premier League teams if you're struggling to get top four. Um, Allison's not the best goalkeeper in the world. I've said that for a while as well. Oblak will always and forever be clear. Um, but yeah, um, I think Leipzig could, but um, I don't even know. Are they having are they having a good season? I don't I don't really know. I they're second really right now. Okay, so they're second. So um, yeah, I reckon they'll probably beat them. Um, It'll be a big game for certain players to show what they can do. Obviously, we know um, Ipan Meccano, he's agreed to go to Bayern Munich, but apparently there's loads of other teams in for um, Konate. So I think mm. him, uh, Julian Nagelsmann, it's a, it'll be a big test for him because obviously he's been linked to loads of jobs. Um, so yeah, I reckon, I reckon Leipzig will beat him. But then, like you said, it's Liverpool in the Champions League, so you never know. Yeah, then... On the Wednesday, we've got Porto, Juventus and Sevilla Dortmund. Jack, Dortmund are a weird team. They've got such quality in their ranks. Jaden Sancho is kicking on as well in the new year, trying to get their chance to feed back up for United. Haaland scored in the weekend, but they still drew 2-2 two, two to Hoffenheim. No manager at the moment, but they just agreed to sign uh, Mönchengladbach's manager, Marco Rose, at, at the end of the season. Do you think a Champions League is almost a way to just save their season a bit, almost get a bit of respect back for them because they're not doing well in the league? Yeah, can I just say that appointment's a very good appointment. He's a very good manager. Um, he, Dortmund, like you said, they're weird. Some some weeks they'll be, win five 0 the next week they'll win three. They'll lose three one to the bottom team in the league. Um, who did you say he got Sevilla? Yeah. 
Sevilla are okay. Um, they're, on they lost, they're on a good run, do you say? Yeah, so Sevilla have not lost a game since the 12th of January against Atletico Madrid. And if I'm correct, they just beat Barca in the first leg of their Copa del Rey game as well. So they're not on bad form. Yeah, um, that's going to be a tight game because they're both... You know what, now I think Sevilla might do it now. I think who's who is it like a is it a neutral ground or is it one home? Um, I think it's uh, as that Sevilla had had it much short to be honest. But, yeah, I think yeah. I think Sevilla will win, but to answer your question, I think yeah, because if Dor- Dortmund aren't having a great season, they're up and up and down. Um, a good Champions League one could um bring up their confidence, which will help them in the Bundesliga get um catch up to. Leipzig and Bayern Munich, but I don't see them lasting in the competition very long. Yeah, and then tie, the other tie is Juventus Porto. Juve knocked out by Leon last year. I think it was a bit of a shock to everyone. It wasn't the last yeah. of last last sixteen. Ronaldo's thirty four now. Doesn't look like he's slowing down, but of course, age will always play a factor with every player. Do you think it could be another Champions League for him this year, or do you think Juve just aren't there yet? No, they're, they're not there yet. Um, I don't think Pirlo's there yet as, yet as a manager, which is obviously fair enough. It's his first season, but um, I don't, I don't really see Ronaldo winning another Champions League. If I'm being honest, because I don't think, I think if he's going to win another one, it would have to be within the next two years, and I don't think they'll be ready for that because they've signed young. Players like um, McKenney, who's and Delit. Obviously, he got to the semi final a few years ago, but they're not ready. Um, and yeah, uh, so I think they'll definitely go through against Porto if they don't. And obviously, that's something that's huge. But um, no, I don't. I don't think they'll win it this year. Next year, maybe depending on where they're at. But who knows? I don't think no, not this year. Yeah, I mean, Juve lost to Napoli on the weekend 1-0, which is a big blow to them in terms of catching up to both Inter and AC Milan. Yeah. So, yeah, I think you're right there. I think it's maybe it's a bit too early for Pirlo and a bit of these players as well because Delic's, Delic's probably one of the better defenders as well, which is obviously saying something. But mm. McKenny's been doing well this season. But again, like, you can't trust young players to be consistent, especially in the Champions League as well. It's just... You just can't expect that from them because they're still working on their own game. But yeah, I mean, elsewhere, this weekend we do have the Milan derby as well coming up. Uh, Inter right now one point ahead of AC Milan. So that's going to be a interesting game. Obviously, last time they played as well, Lukaku and Zlatan had a bit of a clash. So we'll see how that continues there. Um, Bayern became Club World Cup champions as well. They beat... The Mexico team, I think, Tigers or Tigers, however you want to say it. Uh, I'm not sure if you guys saw the a part of the third place playoff. There was a penalty from a Palmeiras player. There's no ways to describe the run up he used for it. Is this the one that was all over Instagram and Twitter? Yeah, so like <laughs> it was like the Neymar run up like ten times bigger almost so yeah. he's trying these side steps he's running back slowing down he's stuttering and he's just it was a poor penalty like and obviously they end up losing on the shootout as well <laughs> so it wasn't great for him but yeah the embarrassment yeah it kind of been great for him um you do have some midweek fixtures in the Premier League. Well. got Everton Man City coming up I think that might be C's game in hand as well to see, you know, how can I really make that gap even bigger now? Everton need to bounce back after a poor defeat against Fulham. They're obviously missing Cavaloon as well. I'm not sure if he'll be after that game or not, but... I think he, he might be back. Oh, he might be back. Yeah, so, I think it's a close call. Yeah, I mean, they're at home as well, so they're probably feeling a bit more confident rather than if they had to go to the Etihad, but against their City team, you'll never know. Um, other than that, yeah, Ligan. So Neymar did miss the last game, but PSG did pull off a two-one win. I think they played the front three of Mbappe, Cardia, and Moise Keane. 
So I'm not sure if that's how they'll set up against Barca, if it'll work against Barca. But even then, Barca aren't particularly strong, I'd say, at the back. They're still a bit weak. Yeah. They're getting some youngsters through as well, like Ronald Araujo. There was one of the players, I can't remember his name. Even their attack's quite young as well. So they're entering a lot more now. So I think they're in a better position than last year. I don't think they'll get being eight two by anyone, but still not strong enough to pose a proper threat for now, I'd say. I just I don't see PSG ever winning the Champions League with that midfield. But if you actually look at their midfield, you've got I'd say there's one world class player in there. Feel free to disagree and that's Ferrati. But then other than mm. that, like Ander Herrera. Like, I know he was good for Man United, but like he's not gonna, like he, he's not gonna be that player to take PSG to win the Champions League. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. I think that was probably I mean, last season. So he's in the final against Bayern because the league is so different to the Champions League. That's the problem. So yeah. In the Prem or La Liga or even Bundesliga, you will get challenged by almost every team. And that's why United again uh, draw into West Brom because. They might, they might not be the best team, but they're still going to pose a good threat. And in, in Ligue 1 is not the same. So last year, Marquinhos was a CDM for them, playing holding midfield. And in yeah. Ligue 1, that's fine. You can do that. The quality is not the best, so you can afford to do that. But against a team like Bayern, you need someone to almost play at the back, control the tempo as well. And obviously, that's not Marquinhos' like, role. He's a centre-back. He's not a CDM. But in Ligue 1, you can do that. Yeah. That's the difference. Just... You can understand it as well, obviously, PSG, when they're doing so in the league, you would think, oh, you know what, we don't have to buy anyone, we don't have to change it that much. But the Champions League is such a big jump from the league. I just don't think, I agree, uh, the midfield is just not good enough. I mean, the Rattis, that's, that's, what I've been, yeah. that's what I've been saying. Like You know when um we when we appointed Thomas Tuchel when everyone was saying, oh, he couldn't win the Champions League with Neymar and Mbappe? And then I was like, I was like, okay, that's, I was like, but have you looked at their midfield? And then, that's just what I'm saying. Like you can't win a midfield with Verratti and a Herrera and um, Idrissa Gay. It just like, that's, that's never going to win you a, mid, uh, a Champions League. Like Liverpool done it, but then they also had players like Van Dijk, Salah, yeah, Mane. Yeah, it's just different quality. Yeah, well. Exactly, that's mm. what I'm saying. Like I can't think of any other teams that have won it without a midfield. Yeah, I mean, especially Bayern midfield last year. Kimmich was unbelievable. Thiago was great exactly. as well. So... You've got to have these players, but it's just a bit of a difficult one because the league, and I know I always seem to rate it a lot, but, you know, it's, it's not PSG's fault that they can't leave it, you know. Yeah. But, I mean, obviously Messi is linked with the move there in the summer. Neymar wants him. How they afford it, I mean, if anyone was, it probably would be PSG or City, but, you know, is Mbappe going to go? Is, they could sell Di Maria, I guess. I'll give him some funds, but... If we saw the messy contract leak, it's not going to be easy for anyone to pay that. Obviously, Barca are in debt as well, so you never know. It's a difficult one, but yeah, I think those are the four fixtures this week. The rest are seen next week. Obviously, um, obviously, Jack, I don't think you can talk about Europa League too much. I know both, both, both Arsenal and United don't have the easiest fixtures. Real Sociedad and Benfica, but it would still be an upset, I think, if both teams or either team yeah. were to go up. Um, I'm not too sure who Leicester are facing. I keep forgetting they're in Europa League, to be honest with you, because you just don't expect it. So they're having a good season, but uh, they're against Slavia Prague. So I think that's where both Suchek and Kuval came from, from West Ham. I'm correct. So, yeah, they're a good team. Because yeah. I remember when we played them, when we was in them, the Europa League, and yeah, they're a good team. Yeah, exactly. So, I mean, other Europa League fixtures are AC Milan against Red Star Belgrade, and you want to watch out for obviously Spurs, Wolfsburg, uh, Rangers are still in there, of course. Uh, Lille versus Ajax, probably the most challenging one. I don't know, it's not a challenging one, but even one. Both teams doing well in their own league. Ajax, of course, and their own problems with Onana being suspended for a year and Hellas being left out due to administration issues, which is a big blow for them because he's doing really well for them at the moment. So I would be annoyed if I was their manager to just see a striker left out due to administration issues. I don't That's know how that happened. Yeah. So dumb. But yeah, um, other than that, West Ham have taken the lead at halftime. They're 1-0 up. Uh, Declan Rice scored a penalty. 
So right now oh, they are got in another the, penalty. Yeah, so I think the earlier one was. Yeah, just allowed for a foul. Yeah. Oh, offside, offside. Yeah, so right now West Ham are in the top four. So if Chelsea lose now, it's not going to be. Uh, yes, I told you, I'm telling you, it's set for Chelsea to lose one now. Don't if Chelsea win, Liverpool go like seventh. Uh, sixth, I think. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, Chelsea could really put the pressure on Liverpool here, or they just put the pressure back on themselves. Really, it's typical Chelsea. Chelsea. Yeah, I mean, typical Chelsea is yeah. it's ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, West Ham seems to be dominating in terms of uh, shots and shots on target, but Sheffield actually have more possession technically. But yeah, I mean, Newcastle we talked about earlier a bit. They're not in the worst form. I think they've won two of the last three. As you say, Maximin coming back has been a huge bonus for them because he's he's a good player for them and he's almost like their talisman. Um, and now they lost a goal score. Yeah, I think Callum Wilson's out for eight weeks. Yeah. I think Fabian Shah's out for eight weeks as well. So they are there for taking. Um, obviously, I'd offer Joe to do well, but I'm not expecting him to make a huge difference. I know he's still his debut, but I might watch the chess game just for him to do this. But... Because uh, they beat Southampton last, I believe, 3 2. Obviously, good win over Southampton, but they have no issues at all with their injuries. Steve Bruce under the pressure. I mean, Chelsea really should win, given the circumstances. <laughs> they really should. I mean, I can't think of any reason why not. Win. Yeah, there's no reason why we shouldn't be getting three points. It just depends on who plays. I'm hoping that it's going to be Jorginho and Kovacic. I can't believe I'm saying that because I hate Jorginho. But he's, he just... But he, what? Huh. You hate the guy. You're saying, yeah. I think I want it to be Jorginho. Like, that's, what? What, that's what I'm saying because when... when um, it Who played... Oh, Kante and Gilmore played against Barnsley and they were... It just wasn't working. So I think too, we even had to change, change the formation. But um, go on, Jack. What did you say? No, yeah, I'm just saying because with, with his style and formation, I think Kante said a good player, yeah, but that's the one thing that's always not let him down because it's not bad, but that's the thing that's always he probably should improve on his like passing his distribution. Yeah, like, he can win the ball perfectly and play a five yard pass, but when you've got 60 70 percent possession of, in a game, it would be dictating play passing uh, in between the lines, then that's probably where. He might have to come out in this um, style. Yeah, that's where it is. Where Jorginho is best when, when we've got all the ball. It's when it's when he gets pressed, like by. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. So whenever we play a Man City or something, then it could be a very long game. But yeah. we should win, and it just depends. It depends who plays. Because if we play, um, Kante, which I don't think he will. I think he will play Jorginho. Um, and then hopefully, hopefully he plays. I, I do not want to see Hakim Ziyech or Pulisic in our starting lineup. They don't deserve it. They've both been awful. Pulisic's been awful all season. Um, Ziyech, he's been awful since he came back from injury last last month, I believe. But so yeah, we should we should win. There's no excuses if we lose. I, I don't care. We need to win this game. Yeah, I think the only other thing I think of this week is uh, I think reports came out today that David Luiz will be extending his contract by another year, which is great for us, really. I mean, he's on good form, but we all know it's not going to last. It's so inconsistent. Yeah. Yesterday, I thought he was terrible because I don't know why, but he just kept being, going long balls everywhere and there was just no need for it. And a bad angle doesn't really win long balls like that. And the ones that are going behind are just always too powerful. Or the quality we have in the middle of actually playing passes just didn't make sense. But, you know, Gabriel, Gabriel looked good yesterday, which is good. Um, holding stood on four. Pablo Mauro is back as well. So we have four solid centre backs for the time being, and hopefully they can keep fit. But just before we end, just want to guys your prediction, one word: who's going to win the Champions League and Europa League? I'm sorry, you go first. <laughs> uh, I'm going to go Bayern Champions League. I'm going to go. Oh, who's in the Europa League? Um, Arsenal. <laughs> Is it Main <laughs> <laughs> uh, AC Milan, Tottenham, Rangers. Star, Rangers. Probably. Yeah. Who came no. down from Champions League? Who came no, down I'm from Madrid, make... Jack? 
Um, we did. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> <It's my bad>. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm gonna make Jack happy, and I'm gonna go with if 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 you have if obviously if you don't go out this round and you get Pogba back and he's firing and you get Bruno firing and if if Martial can find some form then I'm gonna go with Manchester United. Sorry, Joel. <laughs> Fair enough, Jack. Honest, I'm gonna go the same thing. You can't. I, from what they did last season, what they've started to do this season, I don't think you can say anyone bar bar Munich. Yeah. Um, because my club's in the Europa League, which I'm not happy about, but they are. <laughs> I'm gonna go with. Um, well, let me let me just try not to. Which will be realistic. Yeah, Man United. I yeah, think, I'm yeah, sick of the pictures now. Uh, they have a good chance. Yeah, I think it's just too hard to pick anyone other than Bayern because it's looking at everyone's form right now. Obviously, finals in May, but the only one could potentially challenge is Man City. And like I said earlier, without a striker, can they do it? Because they, they didn't do it last season with that same problem because Jesus isn't good enough, really. But yeah, I think I'm going to go Bayern. Europa League, I want to say Arsenal, but I think we can beat everyone in the Europa League. Like, we've beaten United enough times to know that we can do it. Spurs, I know we haven't beat them in a while, but we know we can do it. Milan, oh, they're obviously good, but I don't know. I think we have the quality to beat everyone, but I don't think we will do it. I think if I had to go with someone... I'd probably get AC Milan to do it. I think defensively, I think Tomori has actually been helpful for, for, for them a lot. But attacking, I think. I mean, they lost their last game as well. Oh, I don't know. I'm going to say Arsenal. We're going to win it. Arteta's, Arteta's <laughs> men are going to do it. All right. That's the <laughs> I Have a nice. Before I think it's time to talk.